Welcome back, guys. So, we were going on along with Q and Lamb's plan, and then it got betrayed along the way, finding out that people within our own organization were working against us the entire time. And we escaped with Jummo to here on the Bentang, and we've been just kind of meeting people around the ship lately. There's a shockingly large number of pe people around here, which is a surprise, because it, it feels like they're establishing, like, the main base of an entire campaign or something with how many characters there seems to be on the ship. But, like... They originally said the campaign was like six hours long, and I'm so, so much further than that in here already that I can't help but think, like, we're probably not far from the ending, huh? So I kind of wonder why there's... kind of surprised there's so much stuff here. I think they just like writing characters. I think that the, uh, process of this company... is it Hairbrain Studios, I think? I'm not entirely sure, but I think that's the case. Uh, I, I think I remember it specifically being a kind of name of a company that seemed to oddly clash with being a bunch of, uh... CRPG makers, but uh, I think half half the theories, the thing they do when they make content is just make a bunch of character sheets like they're playing D&D, &D. Oh, well, Shadowrun in this case, and uh, then they just c come up with a framework around that, because it's some of these just seem like an excuse to cram a character in there, like that chef we met over here, cooking her fish and having her little backstory and everything, and I don't know, might never see her again. Friendly Orc. With an easy smile and a relaxed body language, something about this orc seems intrinsically pleasant, despite the myriad of guns and swords laying on the table near him. He raises a hand in greeting as you approach. Hey, stranger. Always nice to see a, a new face out here. Nice to meet you, too. You part of the crew? Who, me? Nah, man. I'm just hanging out here until my next job. I know some of the crew, and it's a good, tr uh, good transit hub if you're looking to go places by ship and... Stay off the official records. It's a pretty cool place, truth be told. The name's Garrick, by the way. Wandering Swordsman, at your service. You know what? I'm starting to think... I'm thinking the developer plays... has role-playing sessions of Shadowrun, like, in the office. I'm, I'm thinking some of these miscellaneous characters at this particular location might actually be, like, their actual personal characters from their game. They're just sort of self-inserting into the story. I'm just I'm just thinking, because I get, I, I don't know, I could be proven wrong, but I feel, I feel like the amount of development they get is probably disproportionate to how much screen time they're going to get, so I think they're just cameos for characters they that they play in their own campaign. Uh, does being a wandering swordsman pay well? I can't complain. Keeps food in my stomach and clothes on my back. I'm my own boss, and I can t choose to take or turn down jobs whenever I please. The orc beams, planting a fist on each hip. Seems like a stupid way to live, but I kind of like it. It's like a messed up storybook adventure, you know? So how'd you get into the whole wandering swordsman thing? Seems like a, a bit melodramatic. I grew up on stories about wandering Zhang Hu, uh, swordsmen and other martial artists. I loved reading books like The Water Margin, The Deer in the Cauldron, and The Journey of the West. There's a kind of romance to it that appealed to me, and still does. An outlaw living by their own code, fighting the mighty powers, and living by their own wits? It beats the usual story I know. Born poor, starve, die poor. Garrick gestures off towards the distance. Most people out there haven't got a shred of a hope that there's anything better. When you live like that, it grinds you down. I figure, if I can see my life as a, modded ver a modern version of one of those classics, I'll keep it'll keep my spirits up. And that's worth more to me than all the new in the world. Where are you from? Garrick doesn't sound like a Chinese name. I grew up on the streets of o in Oakland, California. Free state, you know? Oakland. That's very, 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 very local for me. <laughs> Garrick gestures towards two tusks, grinning. Non-humans weren't, uh, weren't very welcome in San Francisco after Japan began protecting it. Anybody who wasn't highly connected or a normal human got shoved out. Definitely makes me want to, uh... Definitely a good reason to want to spend more time in this whole whole universe, really. It's just getting more idea of all these little moments. Japan protecting or uh, Oakland. I mean, protecting San Francisco. And Oakland becoming Orkland and stuff like that. That's... A lot of little details to pick up on there. I've only had one... Yeah, I think I've had one role-playing session ever of, of Shadowrun. That was mostly just like... I was practically playing an extra in somebody's campaign. So I don't have much experience with the universe. I first encountered it by playing the shooter, which I actually thought was kind of fun, but died very quickly. And, uh, now we're in this game. 
I mean, you know how it is. A lot of people hate anyone with tusks or horns, right? Well, the Japanese in San Francisco took it to the next level. Maybe they saw it as their duty to clean up the city, or maybe it was greed for the land folks owned. But either way, whoop, out we went at gunpoint. I was bored a little after all that. My parents told me about it. What's the California Free State like these days? Kind of a pile of crap. San Francisco's all wrapped up by the Japanese Megas, their playground basically. Los Angeles is an independent city-state, where your biggest claims to power and fame are Sacramento and Ventura. That's even more local for me, stop it. Freaking me out. <laughs> you, you know, uh, when, your, when your biggest claims to power and fame are Sacramento and Ventura, you know you're really scraping the barrel. Nah, I don't miss it, not one bit. I jump and in, in, uh, end up in Hong Kong. Garrick snaps his fingers excitedly. Aha! This ties into my, ma my tragic past. A tale of revenge in foreign lands, sor swords and sorcery, of dead parents and a criminal underworld. Why are you so smiling if it's so tragic? Well, what'd you expect? It happened when I was a kid, and that was ages ago. I lived in a slum surrounded by gangsters and junkies. Objectively speaking, it was probably the best thing that happened to me. It got me out of Oakland. I'd gone to the corner store, and when I got back home, my house was on fire. Mom and Dad had been hacked up with a machete. Don't know why. Maybe a BTL debt. Maybe they just got on the wrong side of one of those local gangs. Long story short, a local fixer felt bad and took me in. Started me off as an assistant, and moved me up to be his muscle as I got older. Sounds like a familiar story to me. Figured it might. People like us, we tend to come up from the same kinds of places. Nobody gives up easy... Nobody gives up easy street for a life of crime unless they're seriously screwed up in the head. But it's a better life than begging, or being at the bottom of the food chain, yeah? Anyway, once I was old enough, Big Spen, the fixer, hooked me up with my Choi Li Futsu Sifu. That's when, uh, that was when I got my first street shops. Odd jobs here and there. And I'm not an adept, so I also had to scrounge to install whatever where I could afford. I'm out here because my Sifu figured it's time for me to learn from other masters. I've been visiting monks, triad enforcers, back alley schools for months now. Are you looking to avenge your parents? I guess, if it comes up, or if I hear something. It seems like the kind of thing I should be honor bound to do, but it was so damn long ago, I figure I could afford to let it sit a bit longer. Garrick shrugs, so, uh, spreading his arms hopelessly. Maybe that's kind of weird, but... I don't want that part of my past to define me. See you later, Garrick. Hope to find hope you find who you're looking for. Hey, thanks. If it happens, it happens. If not, at least I'll have something in an interesting trip. That's the thing, really. Be where you are. Live where you are. Make sense? Yeah, that's a, that's very that's exactly what we've been doing lately. Very zen, Garrick. It's more or less my situation. We're just welcome to Hong Kong. I'm not from here. I'm stuck here. This is my life now. I, yeah, I would not be surprised if I never talked to any of these characters again, and I'm getting even more convinced over time that these are, like, inserted characters from, uh, somebody's Shadowrun campaign. Here's Huey. The constable's attention is locked onto his PDA's display. He inhales through his nose, then speaks. Just, be just because I'm standing here doesn't mean I'm not busy. He shrugs, his tattoos moving with the rise and fall of his shoulders. Stay your business. Nice neck tattoo. Were you a gangster before you became a cop? Yeah. I got jumped in when I was a kid. In my old neighborhood. It was impossible not to be. I got out when I was a teenager. Turned my life around. When I landed in HKPF, they put my background to, to good use by sending me to uh, undercover. You were a narc? Yep. I worked undercover for a couple of Kowloon City's nastier street gangs, the Black Butchers and the 444s. Helped to bring them down from the inside. Glad to be off that detail. I was good at it, good at it, but it was doing, but doing that sort of work takes a toll. So how'd you wind up on this task force? My cover got blown. Barely made it out of the 444 territory alive. I couldn't stay under cover any longer, so they had to find another use for me. When Lamb told me about the task force, I volunteered. What do you do when you're not being a cop? What do I do? You mean like my hobbies? It's kind of a strange thing to ask. Humor me. I'm curious. He shrugs. Ah, uh, sure, okay. I paint. Oils. Mostly landscapes. I've had a few showings in Victoria Harbor coffee shops. 
Can we choose a subject, maybe? This is getting a little too personal for my taste. I have to go. Go on, then. Alrighty, then. There's the bolt hole. Yeah, I could re I could reacquaint myself with the various people around here. There's the command trailer. Lung. Pirate. There's a lot of people around here. Let's see. I haven't conferred with my friends yet, have I? Well? Well, everything seems to be more or less in one piece. Did you and Q ever get anything figured out? More to the point, do you know who we're fighting yet? Not yet. She wants me to meet her to go over what we have. Might as well get to it then, because we got nothing. Oh, and Grotto? Hurry. These choppy waters are doing a number on my stomach, and I'm fresh out of Dramamine. I think, I think I'm supposed to just not be here. Should I look at the computer real quick? Anything interesting? I think they're they're all f stuck at the door just to ferry me to go b right back out and continue the story. Uh, messages? Now we have mail. Oh, it's old mail. Never mind. Inbox? Nope. Uh, shadow and BBS. Keywords. All right. Decker still looking for team. Experienced Decker still looking for team to run with. Potential for long-term arrangement. I'm getting uh, I'm getting by on solo work, but I can't take most jobs without a team. Seriously, anyone will do. Requirements. You must not take experimental stims during runs. You must not tamper with chemicals in secret labs. You must know how to properly operate a moped. You must listen to your Decker when your Decker says, I don't have control of that turret yet. You must have a good sense of humor. Optional. This is the guy that we kept encountering during the main campaign. Not, not encountering, but reading his posts over and over again where he just has this ever-growing list of requirements because over time, different Deckers keep screwing up and dying in various ways. Not Deckers. Uh, no, because there was already Decker in the group. Well, someone keeps dying. Uh, hey. I'm with a group that could really use a Decker. My oh, right. He's the Decker. I forgot about that. He's the Decker and all of his crews keep dying because they keep doing st he well. They keep having very specific accidents, and he keeps act adding the uh, list, the the uh, the stipulation to the list, including apparently not uh, not waiting for him to control a, a turret properly and then running in front of it. Uh, hey, I'm with a group that could really use a Decker. My buddies are a street Sam and a weapon specialist, and I'm a chamois, follower of Dog. Also, we're new to shadow running, so we'd be grateful for your experience and connections. All right, he's probably really going to be worried about this whole new to shadow running part. Also, for, I think this is the first time I've heard a shaman called a chamois so far, which takes me back to World of Warcraft days in a way that I wasn't ready for. When you say you're new, how new? We know what it's like to be on the streets, pulling small heists, smashing and grabbing, surviving. We're used to steering clear of triad thugs operating into the radar. We're, we're from the walled city, see? You're from the walled city? As in, you lived there under, until the riots? That was a really unlucky place for a long time. I'm... Just not sure. Come on, SJ. You think we might be unlucky? We're green, but we're not idiots. We know about you, about your team. People talk. Well, we're willing to take the chance. We believe that our luck has turned. Maybe your bad luck, bad, uh, bad luck streak has broken too. Only one way to find out. Fine. I shouldn't be superstitious. We'll just... Find the right milk run to start with. You did review my list of requirements above, yes? Oh yeah. This is gonna be a blast. They're all dead. We're never gonna hear from them again. <laughs> More police files. Dang. I'm coming through all these police file entries. Lots of boring misdemeanors, but here's a zinger. Kendall Chan, cram fiend. Robbed banks to feed the monkey. No convictions yet. Well, sounds about right. Except for the fact that I don't have a problem with cram, man. I, I can barely remember the last time I used... Yeah, right, Funk. But check this out. Assassin Lee Wong gave the pigs his client list, raiding Johnson soon. Ooh, I wouldn't like that spread all over the Matrix about me, true or not. Those are a lot of letters. Uh, I think Yankee Noodle jacked out post-haste. You don't think... Somebody's in deep shih tzu. Going to the dogs. Someone's in trouble. Word spreading that someone might be turning people in. Stuck in a pipe. Please help. I'm wedged in a pipe <laughs> in the llama power station. I was making a discreet exit via disused pe syst uh, pipe system when my gear got hooked on something. 
Now I'm trapped in this fragging pipe and my partner's not answering his PDA. We'll split the pay if you get me out and help me complete this job. Hey, Shenzhen Joe, you listening? This could be the milk run we've been waiting on. Just retrieving some guy from an exit, piece of cake, considering the main job's already done. Slow down, GC. Can we hear a little more about your, uh, situation, Sticky Wicket 36? <laughs> These names. Hey, Shenzhen Joe. I'm relieved you saw this, sending you the blueprints now. Plus my coordinates. I'll owe you, I'll owe you big time. Considering how much trouble you get yourself into, you tend to stay, say that a lot. Okay. Got your files and, uh... Sticky? Are you underwater? Yeah, could be. You should probably bring some scuba deer and the kind of laser cutting device. No, 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 Sticky. You do understand what happens if we cut into an underwater pipe while you're in it, right? Okay, we're not doing it Sticky's way. But we can come up with another plan, right? Are we helping Sticky? Yeah? Georgie, my friend, this is the very definition of not a milk run. He's stuck in a pipe underwater. How'd you make that mess? And he's like, yeah, just cut us out. What's gonna happen? It's, um, explosive decompression and then drowning, actually, is what happens. Cause ocean bad? Unless you're a shark person? Graffiti. Has anyone noticed some really weird graffiti scrawled by the Hayway entrance in the Walt City? Free enterprise is not so free. When corpses have rigged prosperity. Oh, it rhymes. Oh my god, it's the haiku bot. Yeah, it's all over town, actually. How about this one? Right on Queensway. Whom exactly does the council serve? What fate do treacherous tigers deserve? A dig at Eastern Tiger? Or the whole corrupt lot of them? I'm down with the anti megacore sentiment, but the uh, versification could use a little work. Lame. But it's not just about the megacores. Spotted this one by the Hung Hom Ferry Pier. Bullets erupt at a quarter to four. Who's the SDU searching for? I know everybody who's ever picked up a can of spray paint in HK, but I don't recognize this work. I suspect that we're dealing with some kind of collective movement. The Tigers might not even be working together. Hey Tagamit, is any of the graffiti in all caps? Did you see any, like, tiny little footprints in the paint? For the last time, Pinky, you are not being stalked by robot ants. You won't think it's so funny when they come for you. We've had such a weirdly long... Ridiculous, uh, nanobot robot monster thing going on. Where a haiku bot became self aware nano machines and started stalking one of the Shadowrunners, supposedly. What? That was the weirdest, just the weirdest sub story that you'd only pick up on by reading all of it along the way. There's Lung, and there's the trailer for the story. Of course, we're gonna explore though. Pirate. Hello, pirate. A bored-looking pirate stands amid a collection of sea mines, a spiral-bound and laminated manual in one hand. The cover reads, Ares Mark 62, Naval Mine. He's busily th uh, thumbing through it, a sour expression on his face. Hey, you need something? Do you really need a manual for sea mines? It doesn't inspire confidence. Hey, friend. I've got to deal with over 30 different types of mines, demolition charges, warheads, and bombs. Each one's been brought second-hand from a variety of, second of security agencies, corporations, and governments. So they have to pardon me if I like to make absolutely certain I'm following the right steps. The alternative is turning this tub into a smoking wreck. The pirate jerks a thumb towards the mines. The only reason the Bentang and our, ships are, our other ships are safe is that we've got enough explosives to level a small island. Without them, we'd be fighting off the pirates left and right. Mines the pirate code for don't even think about it. You got a name? Call me Two. Is that Two? I'm gonna call it Two. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. <laughs> not my real name, obviously, but that shouldn't surprise you. Name's Grotto. Nice to meet you. Same here. He not, uh, two nods in satisfaction. You like it here? Like has nothing to do with it. These pirates are my family, so I gotta stick by them. But yeah, I guess I do. I'd rather be on a beach with a bottle of whiskey, but I can say... But I can sail to a beach, and we've got whiskey in the hold. Nobody's asking me to get shot at, and we're prosperous enough to feed ourselves. It's not a bad life, all things considered. Besides, I don't know how to do anything else aside from set up and disarm explosives. Not exactly a normal job. Would you give it up if you could have a normal life? I don't know, maybe? Hard to say. It's like this. I've spent so long as a sailor that I don't know what I'd do if I wasn't on a boat. 
surrounded by bombs. Kind of messed up when I say it out loud, but that's the truth of it. Why are you on mine prep duty? Simple. I've spent 12 years with the British Royal Navy as an explosive ordnance disposal technician. If it explodes, I know how to set it up for, or get rid of it. I wouldn't trust anyone else out there to handle them. That's for damn sure. Nobody else is trained. How'd you end up a pirate? Habits dance mostly. You know what being an EOD tech teaches you to do in the real world? Absolutely nothing. There's not a lot of call for bomb disposal outside the police. And after my tour of duty was up in the Navy, I'd had enough of following orders. After 12 years with Her Majesty's salty service, my main aim was to get drunk and forget about all, all about being a sailor. I packed my kit and went out around the world. Ended up in, Mil in Manila, half dead of alcoholism, and met a local girl named Christina. And I got, it got serious. She introduced me to her family, and it turned out they were pirates. After, she, after we got married, I figured I might as well make myself useful, so here we are, priming minds, the... More things change, the more they stay the same, right? See you later. MDU, stay safe. S stay safe, not stay safe. Jeez. So, two is here priming minds all day because he just married someone that took him right back into the profession he started off in. More, eh, in many ways, kind of fixing his life if he didn't have anywhere else to go. Triple Alpha and Quartermaster. I believe that's our Quartermaster, right? Let's check. Back for more gear? Uh, if you got the scratch, I can hook you up. Yep, that's the same one. Alright, special stock. Um, yeah, they're all guns. Just reminding myself a little bit, I guess. Do I want to sell anything? I do have a bunch of silly machine guns and stuff that I might not ever actually use. Yeah, if I ever need money, I can get it. But I don't think I actually have that much need for money. Let's see. Let's take a look at his regular guns and grenades, magic items, armor. I believe I already have the best armor. I have eight armor. Any any numbers bigger than eight? That's a negative. All right. I pop right out of here. Looks like this woman down here is the last person to check in with. Triple Alpha. A, power, a powerfully built woman stands by one of the huge guns, smoking a cigarette. She's carrying a cyber deck, and an assault rifle is slung alongside it. She has the wide-eyed alertness of someone who's either supernaturally hyper-aware or has a lot of headwear. Her stance is easy and relaxed. It's the posture of someone who's ready to fight or flee at a moment's notice, but doesn't expect that she'll have to. The woman nods her head at you, taking a drag in her cigarette. You must be handy, man. Heard about that dust up in Tiger's Den. Glad to see you got out alive. Have we met? Nah. But I know about the work you were doing for you kindly back in Hawaii. Josephine Sang and all that. The shadow in her community is pretty small. Even in a city as big as Hong Kong. So I tend to hear about the big jobs. Call me Triple Alpha. Us old runners, we gotta stick together, you know? You stand by your crew, they stand by you. And you can't count on anyone else. She purses her lips, looking around with an annoyed expression. If my crew would ever freaking get here, why am I always the first one on the scene anyway? I want to get out of the shadows and onto the beach. How big of a team do you have? We got a rigger, a mage, and an adept. I guess there's also, a, I guess there's also our jack of all trades too. She's not really good at anything, but she's got a lot of heart. Totally unafraid to march alongside us, even if she, all she can manage to, to do is plink away with the crappy pistol of hers. That almost sounds like it's making fun of some of the characters in my own party. And then there's me. You can guess what I do. Alpha gestures to the cyber deck and the assault rifle slung across her back. Sounds like a solid crew. They're a good bunch. Highly skilled, quiet, and we get along well. You can't ask for more than that. Are you staying out of the shadows for good? Alpha shakes her head and stares off into the distance. Nah, I don't think so. I've been running the shadows my whole life. It's all I've ever done. I don't know how to do anything else. This is more of a vacation. A break, if you will. I figure we take a break, hit some beaches, take in some sites that are off the beaten path, and come back when we're rested. You keep doing the same thing forever, you're bound to burn out. Alpha glances sidelong at you and gives a little gr a grin. You won't miss the action? Sure I will. Who wouldn't? Action, adventure, intrigue, double crossings, I live for that stuff. It's a little bittersweet, I guess. Not sure how long we're going to be out of the life, 
It'll be a few years at least. A lot of our gear and cyberware is getting old. It's, it's hard to keep up with the old the other runners out there. That kind of upgrade takes time, you know? Not only do we, you have to track down the new stuff, but you have to recuperate and all that. Pretty sure we'll be back, though. And when we are, she makes a low whistle and grins widely. Better watch out, because we'll be top of the line. So what are you going to do once you're out? Aside from a hit a nice beach somewhere? I don't know. There's plenty of inter interesting stuff to see around the world. She takes a drag of her cigarette and ponders the question. I want to see some old ruins, you know? Temples, castles, stuff like that. I like history, so I'm always excited when I get to go to older cities like Rome and Athens. Heck, with that much with as much money as I've got, maybe I'll take a trip into space and play tourist there, too. Never been to space before. You look like you've seen a lot of action yourself. Alpha lets out a rough cackle. Man, you don't know how ha the half of it. You tally up the runs I've been on, I think I must have seen more stuff than even Fast Jack. I might not be as old as him, but I think I take jobs a lot more regularly than he does. I've been to Los Angeles and Seattle and Hong Kong and Berlin and everywhere in between. If it's a weapon, I've fired it. If there's a corporation, I've run both for and against it. The woman gestures languidly with her cigarette as she speaks. It's never dull, I'll tell you that. See you later, Alpha. Hey, you take care of yourself, okay? It's a rough world out there, and nobody's gonna look out for you except for a crew by- uh, Nobody's gonna look gonna look out for you except your crew and yourself. I like your style. Kind of feel like we've seen the same kind of runs. So watch your back, okay? He takes a long drag of a cigarette and flicks the butt away before lighting a new one. Always, Alpha. Good man. Never hurts to be careful. She touches two fingers to her brow and a rice salute. Good luck. I think we might run into each other again after I've gotten upgraded and taken a bit of a break. Looking forward to see when it happens. Part of me kind of wonders, like, are they setting up characters for a future Shadowrun game? Like, these could potentially be party members that they plan on using in the future in some capacity. Or they're discarded characters that they had, uh, that maybe they wrote these kinds of characters for the campaign at one point, but then decide not to use them. There's a lot of potentials there. But yeah, they're just kind of around. Hell, maybe those are characters you can hire when you go on the next missions, because, uh... There's normally a bunch of people that are not your normal crew you can take with you, which I never ever have, because it seems like a waste to not bring the characters along. But, uh, since we're out in the run and on a, a new location, maybe those are the characters you can take on your on, on the last mission instead of the, uh, the usual options. 